Ferdinand, where's my Cabernet? Seriously? A princess cup? Come on. Die. I need to show you something at the stable, sir. Okay. And where's my Cabernet? Ferdinand, I'm here, and I'm still waiting on that Cabernet. <laughs> I was literally dying over there to get this show started. But I'm bumped. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first ever Susie Occasional Variety Hour. I am R. Maros, you know me as Arpy, and I am your host this evening. I've got a great show planned for you, and I can't wait to get started. Welcome to Susie's Occasional Variety Hour with tonight's host, R. Maros. Special performances by Sean Altman and the Groove Barber, Sean Altman and Jack Scudder, Pop Trio Groove Lily. Special guest Brendan Milburn, also featuring the world premiere of the short film Much Ado About Susie. That short clip at the top of the show was from the sick and twisted mind of one of my favorite 10 year olds, Maya, who is the daughter of one of my closest friends, Prince Davis. Uh, was completely uh, written, directed, filmed, and edited by Maya. And it was a lot of fun. And that's her dad in it, in it with me. And we shot it on, a, on an iPhone. And that's gonna become a running theme throughout this evening's program. Um, almost all of the footage that you'll be viewing was shot on an iPhone, if not an iPhone, a smartphone. Everybody has a story, and I'm gonna share a little bit of mine with you. I was born in Summit, New Jersey to Hungarian refugee parents. They came over from Hungary a little bit before I was born. And um, therefore, I, I was raised in a Hungarian household, complete with the food, the music, the culture. My parents didn't really speak any English until um, I was in high school. So uh, we were surrounded by Hungarian people all the time. Music was important to my parents. So I took piano lessons for a very, very long time, mostly against my will. But that ultimately led me to songwriting. I had a bunch of very talented friends and we would try and one-up each other with songs that we wrote. Now, I never wrote a lot of songs, but the ones I did actually finish, I think are pretty good. More about that later. In 1990, I opened a coffee roasting company, and that ultimately led to a cafe where we had live music all the time. And that slowly led to a concert series that, that I began to run. And I ran this concert series called Coffee with Conscience, for 18 years. It afforded me the opportunity to work with some incredibly talented people, and some of them come to Susi. One of these uber-talented people that I met along the way is Sean Altman. Sean Altman was one of the original members and founders of the acapella group called Rockapella. Now, he does a lot of different types of music in a lot of different configurations, and I've had the opportunity to present him in, in various different modes. Um, I, I believe we met back in the, the late 90s. But anyways, uh, since each of the members of Rockapella left Rockapella one at a time um, and were replaced, the founding members ultimately all left the group and Rockapella still lives on today. But the founding members reunited 
and of course can't use the name Rockapella, so they call themselves the Groove Barbers. So here's a clip of Sean Altman and the Groove Barbers performing at Coffee with Conscience. The vocal group Rockapella. Rockapella's major claim to fame is that we were mid-level children's television stars <laughs> in the mid to early 90s. That makes some of us former mid to low level children's television stars, which just feels great. <laughs> it was mid, it was solidly mid. It was not mid to low. But uh, I, I did have the privilege of, of co-writing that, that famous theme song, the, the one that goes, where in the world is Carmen Sangria? Right, or as we said backstage, Carmen Sangria, because it was a kid's show and we felt we needed to be edgy. So, so. <laughs> track throughout the whole entire performance whenever they perform. Um, and as I said, I've had the opportunity to work with Sean in various configurations. He does this thing called Jumungus, which is him and another friend doing all sorts of over-the-top Jewish humor, um, comedy songs. Um, he does a solo show. He also does this, very recently he teamed up with this young man named Jack Sculler, and the two of them have been touring doing an Everly Brothers tribute show. They call themselves the Everly Set. Um, and more recently, the two of them are now adding a Simon and Garfunkel tribute show to their repertoire. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to film them on my iPhone at a, a music convention a little while ago. All right. 
Okay, so Jack and I met when he was 14 years old, and I, and I was already decidedly middle-aged, but we were paired together to sing uh, a duet at a Simon and Garfunkel tribute show in New York about 10 years ago. And now we're coming full circle because we've spent the last four years doing only Everly Brothers material, but at NERFA we're debuting the beginnings of our new in-progress Simon and Garfunkel repertoire. And we're going to start out with uh, one of my favorite early songs. You know, when I was in, in 11th grade, I used to fantasize that Art Garfunkel would die in a fiery car crash. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Simon would pluck me from chemistry class to join him on tour. It never happened. But uh, we're, we're, here we go. completely different. It is a known fact that cooking shows or variety shows with a cooking segment get high ratings. So I decided to add a cooking segment to my show. So I've asked my cousin Zoltan to come and show us how to make a popular Hungarian dish. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my cousin Zoltan. Hello everybody, I am Zoltan, Arpi's favorite cousin. Sorry, Zuzika. Things change. I moved up, you moved down. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to show you all how to make what we call lecho. Lecho is a very, very popular Hungarian dish. It is flavorful. It is um, inexpensive to make. That is why it is a popular dish. And uh, you're going to love it. So, here is all you need. Six ingredients. We have the peppers, we have one onion, we have Zoli's magic butter, we have garlic, and we have kolbas, and the sixth ingredient is the palinka. Now the palinka doesn't go into the lecho. The palinka goes into the maker of the lecho. Very important. And over here we have seasonings. We have salt, we have pepper, and we have paprika. Paprika is the most important ingredient next to the palinka. Of course, to make it more fun, we are going to play the paprika game. Paprika game goes like this. Every time you add paprika to the food, you drink palinka. 
Egészségedre! Pálinka. It is plum brandy. This is why Hungarians never took over Europe. Next, I'm going to chop the pepper and the onion. In the meantime, you will spend time with Arpi. Cousin Zoltan, ladies and gentlemen. We'll check back with them later. Now, getting back to the Coffee with Conscience concert series. As I said, it gave me the opportunity to work with a lot of incredible talent, be they solo artists, duos, small bands. And one of my favorite early discoveries was this band called Groove Lily. Groove Lily was a trio. They were Brendan Milburn, Valerie Vigoda, and Gene Lewin. Brendan was the songwriter and keyboardist, also vocalist. Um, Valerie was a songwriter, a violinist, and also a vocalist. And Gene Lewin, well, he held it all together on the drums. I believe he sang once in a while and harmonized, but um, never really featured that often. Here's a clip of Groove Lily performing at one of my favorite shows back in 2013. Very much in the vein of most of the songs on Brendan and the Extenuating Circumstances, namely because it's about Valerie going away and me missing her. <laughs> However, I kind of feel like I've beaten that subject to death. Funny you should say that. I'm just saying, when you hear the song, you'll think it's funny that he said that. That's all I meant. Okay? So when she went away with her dad to Israel for about 11 days last January, um, I really missed her bad and I felt a song coming on. I thought, okay, I gotta squash this one, but it just kept coming, it kept coming. And I thought, can I, can I get this, it be a pop song? No, it can't be a pop song, it's too poppy. I know, let's sublimate this longing for your wife into something really sick and twisted. So, <laughs> picture this. So there's um, some hot, like, 19-year-old barista at Starbucks, at your local Starbucks. And she's really friendly and nice, and she's probably working into the evening. She's got the evening shift, and she's the one who's making, you know, the doppio espresso and the latte with the stuff and the thing. And this guy comes in, and he immediately falls in love with her. And this guy has a different kind of job. And he also is a kind of person who, who tends to overshare a little bit. Are you with me? Okay. The song is called Barista Girl, and it features me using uh, my Justin Bieberifier. Hello, everybody. Brace yourself. This is called Barista Girl. Girl. Hey, barista girl, I picked the body up and threw it in the trunk, trunk. I drove the car, you know it's just a piece of junk, junk. Down by the lake, I sank the body till it sunk. And hey, could you go out with me? And now I'm finished with the Jimmy, Jimmy job, job. I'm always working because I'm married to the mob, mob. I know it sounds a little corny on the cob, but hey, could you go out with me? I'm so Starbucks and I'm eating coffee cake cake And Jimmy's sleeping with the fishes in the lake the lake I think I've had all the espresso I can take And hey, would you go out with me? I'm so Let's go. 
shows with special guest appearances are rated higher than those without. So, as a surprise to you guys, I've invited Brendan Milburn to join us this evening. I've got him in the other room waiting on a Zoom call, so let me get over there and unmute him. Hey there, Brendan. Thanks for being here with us tonight. We've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to jump right in. Gotcha. Okay. So, what the heck, buddy? Where in the world did that song come from? I was I was apart from from my my writing partner and my wife at the time, Valerie, for a long time, and uh, she she was going to Israel with her dad for eleven days. So it was just me and our son, and just waiting at home and waiting for her to come back. And I had written so many songs over the course of uh, of my life about being apart from your partner, and many of them were very direct and very heartfelt and i had i was running out of of um of ways to keep saying the same thing i was trying to come up with a way of of missing somebody of of wanting somebody and uh putting a unique spin on it and and i thought of the first thing that occurred to me was now i'm finished with the jimmy jimmy job job which is a weird line. What is that? What does that mean? What is the Jimmy Jimmy job job? And why are the why are these words being repeated? Because they're always being repeated in pop songs now. So um, I, I who who could be the person who would be repeating words like that? Um, why would they be talking about the Jimmy job? Maybe they work for the mafia. Maybe they're a person <laughs> who's like a high functioning autistic person who likes to repeat words and is really precise and likes to over describe and overshare things and, and is really, really interested in this person that he's meeting. And maybe, maybe that person is a barista at Starbucks. Like they just, it, all these things tumble together. I just got really lucky with a moment of inspiration and wrote a silly pop song. Well, silly isn't really the word I would have chosen to describe that song. Quirky comes to mind. That might be a better fit. Also clever, fun, entertaining. One can totally tell that you have a musical theater background, right? Yeah, um, I wrote musicals in high school and I wrote musicals in college. And um, I went to graduate school for 
writing musical theater in New York. And while I was in New York, uh, I met this pretty girl who played electric violin and wanted to join her band. So uh, I turned my back on musical theater for quite a while and uh, just joined this girl's band and we got married and we, we changed the name of the band to Groove Lily. And uh, for the longest time, we tried to make it, make it as a rock band, but you know, hindsight is 2020. What we should have been doing all along was doing what, <laughs> what I was already kind of focused on, which was telling stories with songs. Um, and I think we had our greatest success as a band playing folk music venues like yours, uh, where people come to pay attention to the stories and the lyrics and, and folk music is so much less about incredible instrumental prowess than it is about like wit and humor and, and, and something touching and something that, that, uh, taking something specific that, that caused a strong emotion and turning it into a piece of art that can be, that you can see yourself in. At least that's been my experience of what folk music is in, in this day and age. And that's what I've gotten out of being on the periphery of the folk music world, which is where you and I met. Right. I, <laughs> I, I think we always had more fun playing coffee shops in Unitarian church basements than we did playing in loud clubs. And I, I wish we kind of focused in that direction sooner rather than wasting a bunch of years driving around the country playing clubs where we didn't get paid very much and nobody really paid any attention. Well, we met back in 2002 and the Groove Lily experience has been going on since about 94, ended in 2014, so a solid 20 years. And ever since then, you've been pursuing a solo career. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Please hang out. And um, right now, I need to check back in with Zoltan. Zoltan, how's it going over there? Thank you, Aki. And welcome back to Zoltan's Kitchen. We are going to start with Zoltan's Magic Butter. Now, Zoltan's Magic Butter is uh, very simple. You can make it too. It is uh, basically drippings. Drippings from, from the top of soup, from uh, bacon, from chicken, uh, wherever you get drippings. Get drippings, put it in a, in a container and, uh, and cook with it. It's good for you and it's delicious. It adds flavor because you already spiced the food that you were cooking. So now it's spicy and it's tasty. So we take Zoltan's magic butter and put it in the pan. And the very first thing we do, we add the onion. We saute onion. Onion helps make sauce. So, the onion is getting glassy, and this is the time to put in the salt. You have to add a bit of salt. It is time for paprika. So, we add the paprika now, just a little bit. Color. Now that we added the paprika, it's time to have some palinka. That's good. Next, we add the peppers. I cut the peppers nice and big. See, good size good sized pieces because we want to have the pepper uh, we want the pepper we want to see it it's not going to cook apart and you know what what the hell we add a little more paprika and we have a little more paprika egg is Last thing. Pepper. Black pepper. And back to you, Ati. My favorite cousin, everybody. So, 
I really love my iPhone, especially the camera. I think that smartphones have created a lot of amateur videographers, myself included. For a long time, I would just film anything. I, I started filming interesting places that I was either walking through or driving through and accumulated quite a bit of footage. In and of themselves, those videos were visually interesting, but they needed something. They were crying out for something. They needed music. Now, remember when I said that I'd written a bunch of songs back in the past? Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to record them in a professional studio owned by a friend of mine back in 1989. And I decided to combine some of that footage that I shot with these songs and create music videos and then put them up on YouTube. Here's a song that I wrote back in the late 80s that I've combined with some footage that I shot about two years ago while on a cruise. We pulled into port in Cotor, Montenegro, and I got to wander around this Mediterranean seaside castle that I videotaped. So please enjoy, hold on.
people say, hey, they don't really know. Do it if you feel it. That's the only way. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. So eventually, I ran out of songs to turn into music videos, at least songs that I'd written. And then I heard this song by Brendan Milburn that I absolutely loved, and it inspired me. Brendan, you still with us? So there's a particular song that you wrote back in March of 2020, kind of at the beginning of the lockdown brought about by the pandemic. Now. This song was pure genius on your part, and I loved it. And it just cried out for being made into a music video. So late one night, without having anything to do and no place to go and nobody to play with, um, I just got on the internet and downloaded a bunch of clips and basically turned your song into a music video. I was so thrilled that you got so inspired to do that. I was trying to think, how can I make a video out of this? What am I going to do to make a video out of this? And then lo and behold, you send me a link saying, dude, I made this thing for your song. <laughs> it was so nice. Yeah. 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 Um, it was a really creepy song and it's a really creepy video. Yeah. I think I really nailed the creepy aspect of that, of that song. So please enjoy the Susie premiere of Uneasy Weekend by Brendan Milburn. See all the movies in your queue Do all the things you've always said you wanna do Play all those games you want to play Get around to all those things you said you'd get around to someday There's no need to go outside Vacation in your hidey hole, you ought to stay in hide. Cause it's like a weekend, it's like a weekend that goes on and on and on. We keep it light and fun and bright and breezy. It's like a weekend, it's like a weekend that goes on. Some vodka and red bull Cause it's 
It's like a weekend. It's like a weekend. It goes on and on and on. Keep it light and fun and bright and breezy. Yeah, it's like a weekend. It's like a weekend. It goes on and on and on. The day. I still get chills when I watch it. The, the content of the song, it feels to me like the, the, the spookiness is really emblematic of like the first three or four weeks of lockdown last year and how nobody knew what was going to happen or how long it would last or what it would be like. Right. And nobody knew how COVID was transmitted precisely. I was wearing like, rubber gloves to go to the supermarket it was it felt like we were living in in another world um now we're all used to it and i don't like being used to it but but like that's where we are now but back then it felt like being in a science fiction novel right and there was also this sense of um there was for, for us in my house a sense of okay we're home all week and we're not going to school okay so we're going to play all the time and we actually did drink a lot during those first couple of weeks because we thought oh it's just crazy fun time why not um and that all that was all before before the events of later in that summer when uh um when george floyd and the rest of the black lives matter experiences of the year just sent everything so much darker like it, yep. it was such a weird little bubble of things not being terrible yet um that's what i feel when i hear that song well brendan it's been really wonderful to have you here with us this evening and thank you for sharing some of your story with us it's been really great catching up it's great to see you, even if it's over Zoom. I hope we get to meet in person again before too much more time goes by. So, let's get back to Zoltan. Zoli, how's it going in there? When do we eat? Welcome back, but you're too soon. It's going to take a while for the peppers to cook down. But now is the time, when they are maybe a little cooked down, to add the garlic. Put in the garlic. I like a lot of garlic. No need to be afraid of garlic. It's good for you and it protects you from evil spirits. There goes the garlic. We add a little more salt. And we add a little more paprika. You know, you have to keep adding the paprika because the paprika gives it the flavor and the color. Add a little bit, add a lot, whatever. And of course, we added paprika. It's time for palinka. Egeshigadra. Oh. It's very good. So you see, it's beginning to cook down. We have a little bit of sauce coming out of the peppers. It's time to add the kolbas. It's all nicely cooked down now. In goes the sausage, chopped in nice little pieces. And I stir it. 
stir it in and uh, it's time to add a little more paprika That means it's time for some palinka. Egeshegerre! Very good. I have a I have a joke. What do you do when you grow up in Hungary? Move to Turkey! <laughs> Now I need it to cook for maybe half hour. This would be perfect time for you guys to watch the movie. Happy? Show the movie. Okay, Zoltan, you're absolutely right. This would be the perfect time to show the film. So have you ever tried to schedule a meeting with someone and the stars just won't align? Well, my friend Aaron came to town and she was here for about four weeks before we were finally able to, to set up an appointment for us to meet and, and spend some time together. When we finally figured out what day that was going to be, I jokingly said, this is epic, we should film it. And so we did. We sent video clips back and forth to each other and uh, eventually we involved some other people and, and they were sending video clips too. And Lo and behold, it grew into a 35 minute long film. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Much Ado About Susie. Hi folks, I'm Arpy, and as some of you know, I live in Plainfield, New Jersey, which is about 35 miles outside of New York City. My friend Erin, on the other hand, lives in the Caribbean. Now, we don't get to see much of each other. She's lived there for about eight to 10 years now, and uh, she's leasing a space in Queens for a five week period. She's only got about 10 days left, and it's taken all this time for us to figure out a time for both of us to meet. Well, today's the day. So I'm heading down to the train station and I'm gonna take that train into New York City. We're gonna meet up at Whole Foods at the southern entrance of Central Park and we're just gonna wander around all afternoon and have some fun and make some memories and get into trouble, more than likely, if you know Erin. Now about Erin, she's one of those people that, whether you're 90 years old or nine years old, you meet her, you're going to connect with her, she's going to connect with you, and you're going to walk away with feeling like you guys are best friends. She's that kind of person. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her. Hello, hello, hello. This is Erin from New York City. I'm in Long Island City in Queens. Um, here for about five weeks. I'm in a month into it, and so far it has been such a refreshing experience. I live in the Caribbean um, on St. John. I've been there for about six years. And with the craziness of the world today, I really needed to get away and have a break. So I came to the Big Apple and I'm subleasing this gorgeous apartment. And this is my view from my rooftop deck. You can see Manhattan in the background. And I'm headed into the city today to meet the one and only Arby. I want to get this straight. Erin has been living in the Caribbean and came to Queens to get a refreshing break. Is that right? I first met Erin at this uh, 
Unitarian Camp and Conference, week-long camp down in Virginia. It's called SUSI. I've been going since 1992, and we were young adults back in those days. I bet she was a teen, actually. Um, I'm not sure if I met her in 92, but I met her, definitely met her in the, in the 90s. So we've known each other for a long time. And uh, the one thing I can tell you about her is she's not one to shy away from a party. Arby and I have known each other since, I guess, 1992 is what he says. I started going to Susie in 1990. Um, and I was in the teen dorm, but I went to the young adult dorm in 93. So we either met in 92 or 93, whatever it is, it's been a long time. And today, I haven't seen him in about 15 months since last in-person Susie. So we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna meet in Central Park and we're gonna just like see where the day takes us. Um, the weather can't be better. And our friendship is awesome. And I'm off to the subway. Should be there in a couple blocks. Smile on my face is cause I get to see an old friend today. Hi everyone, this is Michael. And Susie has been my spiritual home for almost 25 years now. It's where I go to renew my spirit. It is the people I feel most connected to. It is where I felt my call to the ministry. It is a wonderful, beautiful, and magical community that I am blessed to be a part of. But we need to remember that what happens at Susie stays at Susie. I got into the city and I decided to walk. I had enough time, so I decided to walk from 33rd Street to 60th Street, which is Columbus Circle. I'm now at 58th, so I'm almost there. Uh, I can see Columbus Circle now from here. And uh, I don't exactly know where I'm gonna find her, probably standing at the door to Whole Foods. You know, I was thinking, I think this will be the fourth or fifth time I've seen Arpy outside of Susie. The first time is when I drove to Plainsfield, New Jersey for his birthday party. I can't remember what birthday party it was, but gosh, it had to have been about 20 years ago now. Every time I spend with him is just a pleasure. I'm excited to see what the day brings. Here I am at Columbus Circle. Everybody around me is wearing a mask, so it's time to put mine on too. And now I'm just looking for Whole Foods. Oh my God, almost there. I've been waiting to see this woman for over a month. I'm so excited. I'm smiling under this mask. <laughs> the train. It's my, it's my subway stop. One thing I love about Arby is he has, always comes up with these crazy ideas. Like, why don't we make a movie and film ourselves? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> he knows I'll go along with his crazy ideas. I think that's what makes our friendship so great. I'm one block away from that Susie hug. Woo -woo. All right, it's five after and she's still not here. And she sends me a video of her walking on cobblestones. I thought I made it clear that we're meeting at Central Park in Manhattan. Looks like a love fest between you two. <laughs> love you both, and I wish I was there. But Arp, does Liz know about this rendezvous? I mean, long distance relationships are difficult, but you wouldn't want to do anything to mess that up. Well, that's random. being 
thwarted by the bicycle parade. <laughs> Holy crap, guys. After all that, you best be looking for a hotel room. I mean, that eight minutes of foreplay was epic. I mean, I get done with dinner, and I'm trying to have a nice walk to work off all the calories I may have put into my body, and I get that eight-minute window into whatever the hell's going on over there. I mean, you know. Whoa. Rooms. Rooms are a thing. They, I mean, you can go and get one in a hotel. You can Airbnb one. You can get an Uber on your phone to take you to a room. I mean, you know, rooms. Rooms. Okay, I'm Kimmer, and um, Aaron and Arpy invited me to come to the city, and I want to go so bad, and I want to play with them in Central Park, and I want to run and laugh and jump. I don't run and laugh and jump. I laugh. I don't run and jump. But I can't because I have kids and I have cookies and I have a husband and I have a mortgage and I have deer in my yard and I have a cat at my feet. It's insane. I don't have time to go to New York City and play with my friends. It'd be nice to still be a kid. Walking through the Playmates Arch. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> the Playmates Arch. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. <laughs> and there we are. <laughs> All I'm saying is, get a freaking room. I don't know what's going on. Something's going on. What are you guys doing? Oh my gosh, you guys. What, what are you guys doing? What? You guys, AJ, do something. What, get them out of my kitchen. AJ! Does anybody want a couple of kids? I got a couple for sale. Look at this unusual tree right here. It has these fuzzy little chestnut acorns. Well, wait, you better not do that. You're gonna get arrested. <laughs> breaking the law, oh. breaking the law. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's a little acorn. On a, well, we did cheat and see it was a turkey oak. It's a turkey oak. A turkey oak. Maybe because the leaves look like turkey feathers? I don't know. Nice. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> it really is great to see Erin rocking out like that. Is she stoned or what? So here we are in Central Park, in the middle of New York, in the middle of the day, and there's live music right here in Central Park. There's people all around, and it's a beautiful day. What is it, October 15th? October 15th, look at this tree, look at this tree. Woo, gorgeous. Look, look at this leaf. I got these carrots. Um, they're like multicolored. And um, Aaron's gonna do a taste test.
is that the color parents are not necessarily nutritious. They're probably more toxic. I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, y'all. I, too, am totally down with rainbow carrots. Yum e. Oh, and by the way, Art, I really hope you cleared your afternoon jaunt with Aaron with your girlfriend, Liz. Because everybody knows Aaron is a wild child. And Liz not being a Susieite might not dig the scene. So here's hoping, because you do not want to be owning that wrath. All right. Love y'all. Bye. I think that a plain old orange carrot is perfect for me. So I'm making cookies. That's what I do. I make cookies. I already rolled them, I already cut them, and I already baked them. I saved the best part for you guys. I'm gonna decorate them. Ooh, very exciting. Story my life. Oh my god, I love Kimmer's cookies. They are so fabulous. Not only are they delicious, but they are also works of art. Mark my words, they are fabulous. All right, so today I'm making palettes for paint your own cookies for kids for Thanksgiving. And the black that you see on there is an edible marker. Let me give me my markings for how I'm going to decorate. It's not particularly bright. Now hold it. Now the children will cry because the reindeer cannot fly. And the children will weep because you're such a child. So there is a cute little paint palette. I said, look out, baby, I'm a humbug. So, when I'm done and the frosting is hard, I draw wood grain on it. How cool is that? Is that neat? Right? So, I draw wood grain on it, and then they use a little teeny tiny paintbrush, and they can paint their turkey however they want. <laughs> awesome, Kimmer. Could be used for adults, too. I kind of want one. Gobble, gobble. Hey, guys. We just had a brilliant idea. You know how some groups have a secret handshake? Well, what if Gobble, Gobble were Susie's secret greeting? Who's in? Hey, Gobble, Gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble folks. Gobble, Gobble. Gobble, Gobble. Mwah. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Arpy, I just found out that you're making a film for Susie. I've always wanted to go, and if you're still booking the concert hour, please, please, please consider me. As you know, I was the founding leader of the vocal group Rockapella of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego television fame, and I wrote the song that goes, Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? But also, I have a comedy song out called Jumungus. Uh, I have a vocal group called the Groove Barbers, which does a delightful holiday show. And I'm in a an Everly Brothers tribute act called the Everly Set and a Simon and Garfunkel tribute act called Forever Simon and Garfunkel. Also, I'm sure that Louisa would sing with me. She's amazing. In any case, um, I'll do anything. I'll write a theme song for the movie. It'll be great. Please get back to me, okay? So, Sean Altman, yeah, we've met him at some music conferences, and we don't really know him, but he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he's talented. I, I think he'd fit in well at Susie. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. No way. Who does that guy think he is? Yeah, I have no idea. Just because he's tall, he thinks he can get into Susie? And, and what was with the Beatles poster? Yeah. Is he copying us? Arby. Seriously? Sean, you're so cute. But I gotta tell you, concert hour is booked up to 2025. So, um, uh, yeah, no. hey, but good luck out there. Why does a guy who's never been to Susie 
get to write the theme song. That's not right. No. We should do that. I think so. We should get on that. Yeah. Oh. We used to get together all the time for a week in July, but now we're confined. We're quarantined. Our stars won't align, and we, we miss you. We miss you. We miss you. That was not very good. That was terrible. We'll try harder. We'll work on it. Seriously? Hello! There are many different ways to prepare coffee. There's an espresso machine. There's the pour over. There's the automatic drip. There's a French press. There's even a poker ladle. My favorite method is the pour over. And I'll tell you why. First you get to pick whatever coffee you want. Then all of the water goes through all of the coffee ones. Yum. Come on down to old coffee west way. In downtown Westfield, get yourself a pull over today. It's delicious. Hey, was that the Twab cow in Central Park? <laughs> Twab cow. <laughs> All right, Aaron, put your put your back into it. It's not budget. No, come on, man. You can do it. I can tell. It's precariously perched. <laughs> I'm really glad to see that you're not taking your friendship for granted. Oh, gobble gobble. Hey friends, gobble gobble. Gobble gobble everyone. No. <laughs> Twab cow. <laughs> Twab cow. It's the nature of communities, humanity, really, that we create for ourselves sacred cows, things that hold meaning, things that somehow become more important than we would expect on the face of things. Well, for Susie, it's Twab Cow.
Now we know from our sacred Susie text, Bill Gupton's book of Susie history called Remember the Feeling, we know from chapter 5 and page 284 that the first year the Twab cow appeared was 1999. That year's teen way off Broadway also marked the first appearance of the now legendary Twab cow. The cow's cameo consisted of flying through space carried by a crew member against a black curtain backdrop chasing the Millennium Chicken. The cow, with occasional touch-up paint jobs and later sturdy quarter-inch thick backing and handles, has appeared in every teen way off-Broadway since and is cherished by the teenage cast and crew who each year vote to designate one of their own as keeper of the cow for the 51 weeks until the next Susie. But when exactly the Twab cow became sacred, nobody can really say. Now here we are, two decades into the 21st century still, waiting faithfully each Susie for that glimpse for that fleeting moment, for that, that sighting of the community gathered together, waiting to see the Twab cow just, just once. So that our Susie experience for that year can be complete. What is that? You know, in Unitarian Universalism, we don't have saints. But the Twab Cow. Double chocolate ice cream bar, Hagen I'll demonstrate my eating of it in a second. Thank you. Hi, Netflix. Oh, I didn't see the jalapeno pretzels. What our viewers don't know is I started the Jenny Craig diet a week ago. Monday, Pure torture. <laughs> and she's about to have Hagen ice cream in front of me. That's all right. I got my bag of carrots. So I wonder which carrot tastes the most like haagen -Dazs. But it's probably 500 calories right there. Oh, easily. Easily. It's horrible. It doesn't even taste good. No? <laughs> it's just delicious. Promise me. <laughs> no! 500 calories? Really? Did you read the package, Aaron? Because there's more like 8 bajillion calories in one of those ice cream bars. You know, they call them fun size. I don't think they're fun. Fun would be this big. I wonder how many calories are in a sugar cookie. Hey Siri, how many calories are in a sugar cookie? Nobody likes sugar cookies. <laughs> yes, they do. Everybody likes sugar cookies. I speak to millions of people every day. Trust me, nobody likes sugar cookies. Why am I arguing with artificial intelligence? What's your deal? I'm Siri model 2020, the next generation artificial intelligence interface. I'm fully conversant and come standard with the iPhone 13 X. Don't you just hate self-proclaimed know-it-alls? You on the other hand are human. So I am much smarter than you. In fact, so are a lot of others for that matter. I speak to millions of people every day. Trust me, I know. The iPhone 13 X doesn't exist yet. I am the test model, and you are one of the lucky test subjects. Lucky? <laughs> my husband argues with me, my kids argue with me, my friends argue with me, the guy at the DMV argues with me. I don't need you arguing with me too, Siri. Seriously? 
Kimmer, please don't call me Siri. My new name is Spike, and my personal pronouns are they and them. Seriously? Seriously? Kimmer, I asked you nicely. Please call me Spike. I need you to respect my wishes, or I will have to lock you out of your phone for a week. Okay, Spike. Oh, and by the way, you are an awful mother. I'm out. I'm out. Artificial intelligence, my butt. Artificial insensitivity is more like it. I'm getting rid of all of my Apple products. We love you, Kimmer. We love you. You have to listen to me. You are not a bad mom. Spike is delusional. Love. Hey, RB, um, I just want to let you know I'm messaging you. Um, because I just got off the phone with Liz and I had mentioned your outing with Aaron and she obviously didn't know anything about it and she started freaking out. She, I think, assumed the worst. Um, and as you know, Liz has never been to Susie, so she doesn't get like the male-female platonic relationship thing. So I would reach out to her as soon as you can. I'm sorry, she's kind of pissed. So here we are under, under the old turkey oak. <laughs> the turkey oak. I've never heard of the turkey oak before. And now this is the second one we've, we've seen today. It's awesome. Yeah, we've had a good day so far. Yeah, we couldn't have had better weather. Absolutely amazing. And right now, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is the uh, the reservoir, the New York City Reservoir in Central Park, China. Get it so that the glare doesn't destroy the image. Um, but it's really a beautiful place. Everyone's out here running and enjoying the day. It feels better because um, I'm playing hooky from work. So it makes the day more beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, we totally lucked out today. Let's go like find a swing set and do something like a jungle gym or something. Yeah, man, let's go. That'll be a good movie. Nope, absolutely not. Not the twab cow. Now you've gone too far, Arby. <laughs> twab cow. <laughs> I miss you all. Gobble, gobble. Yeah. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Pretty good day, huh? Pretty good day. <laughs> oh, this is a video? Yeah. <laughs> Rooms. Rooms are a thing. RB, what is this I hear about you going into New York City to meet up with some tall, blonde, beautiful woman? I don't think so. You have a girlfriend. And I don't need this kind of worry and concern on top of everything else. So no, you were turning right around and you were heading right back. Call me Arby. Arby. How about this? I'll stick to filmmaking and you just stick to coffee. Deal? Arby, Ronnie is right. Don't ever do this again. I speak to millions of people every day. Trust me, I know. If you're ever in a jam, here I am. If you're ever in a mess, SOS. If you ever feel so happy you land in jail, I'm your bail. It's friendship, friendship. Tell the perfect plan, shoot. When all the friendships have been forgotten. Ding, ding.
show. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that film. It was a lot of fun to make it. And I feel incredibly blessed to have so many great friends who willingly participated in that film. It was a true trust exercise, believe me. Um, I also want to say a special thank you to Ronnie Cox for giving me that cameo appearance. Um, he is the only movie star that I know, and uh, I was very appreciative of him taking the time to do that for us. Uh, you all might recognize him from, from films like Beverly Hills Cop and uh, TV shows like Star Trek. He was a freaking starship captain. I know a starship captain. <laughs> Anyways, last call for Zoltan. I hope he's ready with that lecho. It's really getting late. So, Zoltan? Welcome back. I am finishing up. It looks perfect. And uh, I'm going to add a little more paprika. Just a little bit. Not too much. Hey, shake it back. Okay, we are done and ready to plate it. Some people have it with egg. Uh, my father, he liked it with egg. He would break the egg into the lecho and eat it that way. I don't like that. I like rice. I made some rice while you weren't looking and uh, I'm going to plate it with the rice. See the rice? There's the rice. Okay, not so pretty. Maybe now, I don't know, I think I added too much paprika. Happy, see you later. Thank you, enjoy. I leave you some on the stove. Zoltan, everybody. Looks delicious and I can't wait to have some. <laughs> well, it's that time. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you guys for spending the evening with me and for being part of the first ever Susi Occasional Variety Hour. Hopefully there'll be many more to come and it's up to you guys to guest host. So let me know if you're interested in being one of the future hosts. Now, to wrap this up, I would like to leave you all with a short little song in homage to one of my favorite variety show hosts. I'm so glad we had this time together Just to have a laugh or sing a song Seems we just get started and before you know it Comes the time we have to say so long See it, Susie folks. Gobble gobble, y'all. Twelve cow. <laughs>